All right, so today we are going to be talking about Roll20 and updated dynamic lighting. So dynamic lighting is something that's been around in Roll20 for quite some time now, but they have, in the last year or so, been re working really hard to kind of update and really innovate the system to make it a lot easier to use and a lot more functional for your actual gameplay. What the dynamic lighting system lets your game do is really provide your players and yourself as a DM with a lot more, uh, a lot more immersion opportunities. It makes your game feel a lot more natural, a lot closer to like you're you're playing in person, and it also lets you as a DM kind of take a little bit of a back seat to be able to focus more on the other thousand things that are happening in the game without worrying about revealing specific areas for different people and you know all that kind of you know, micromanaging kind of stuff. So. We're going to take a look at what dynamic lighting is, some of the different options for it, and simple, simple ways to, to actually be to use it in your games. All right, so if we look here, um, we are in one of my games here. This is one of my Storm King's Thunder campaigns. Um, we have dynamic lighting currently enabled. So as you can see, this character here has a circular vision area around him right here. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the actual settings for dynamic lighting for the actual individual maps themselves. Then we'll look at some of the options for the character tokens and then how to actually create maps using dynamic lighting. So firstly, in order to actually use dynamic lighting, you do actually have to be a uh, one of the premium or plus subscriptions for a Roll20. You do have to be paying for it, uh, but once you do, if you uh, are the DM for your game, for example, everyone in your game will get that benefit. No one else has to pay for it. So only one person. So what we do is we actually kind of split the cost amongst the, the group, my group that plays, and that way it just kind of makes everyone get a better experience and it's not too, too uh, unaffordable. All right, so the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is the actual individual map settings. So if we pull on this blue tab right here, we'll bring down all the different maps that we have here. If I select on the specific options for this map, we'll get this page. So the middle tab here, we have an option called dynamic lighting. You'll still see this third one over here called legacy lighting. That is for the older version. We're not going to be dealing too much with that. It's a lot more complicated. It doesn't work quite as well. Um, the new feature, simply put, just updated dynamic lighting. First option that we have here is really very straightforward, just do you want to have it enabled or not on the map. There are some maps that you just want to be kind of straight up and playing, you don't need to worry about anything with dynamic lighting, you just want to have the map, just is what it is. And if you don't want it to be on, just disable it, simple as that. Explorer mode is an option that lets your party still kind of see the areas that they have explored. So as they make their way and wind through a cavern or something like that, the areas will be revealed for them, but once they get out of that vision range, it will fade to a dark gray. So they won't be able to see anything that was there. So if you're moving monsters or if you're moving things around those areas of the map, they still won't be able to see exactly what's there, but they'll at least know what they have or which parts of the map that they have seen and they have encountered before. Uh, daylight mode is something that used to be called global illumination. Effectively, all that it is, is it will completely light up the map. What that means is that there's no really vision limitation. This is not really how far someone can see. They can basically see the entire map, unless there are physical barriers or obstacles that have been put, put in the way that block them from being able to see. So this last feature here is called update tokens on drop. What that means is that allows you as a DM to control exactly when your players can see a portion of the map. With this feature enabled, they won't be able to see anything until they have clicked, moved the token, and actually released that token into a specific area. That way, you also know exactly what they have seen. If you don't have that, if you have to update tokens on drop disabled, what that means is effectively any player can kind of just click and drag their token around the map and be able to see any part of it without actually revealing it to you as a DM. So it does tend to be a good idea to have it turned on, but ultimately it is up to you and to the way that your game functions. This last option here, referring to GM darkness opacity, it's really just the, the darkness of the GM layer of the game. So it just kind of you know, gives you a good idea of, of you know, a clear delineation between the areas that the party has seen, the party hasn't seen, and what's just hidden for you as the GM. The next thing that we want to be looking at here is the actual settings and options for the tokens themselves. So if we just double click on a token here, the third tab over, we do again, once again, get the updated dynamic lighting. We are again going to be ignoring the legacy lighting tab because that is not important for what we're looking at today. So we'll look at the different options that we have here. The first one we start off, it's called vision. Very straightforward. <laughs> if you don't have this enabled, your character just won't have vision. So if something happens, they've been completely blinded or there's an area that is complete darkness, you could just remove their vision capability entirely. So it's simple toggle on and off right there. 
Moving on to Night Vision in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, this is what we call Dark Vision, essentially. And it's what lets your player see, um, see what's around them without having any kind of a light source. So if we turn that on here, you get a, a custom box here where you can put in the exact amount. Typically it's 60, 90, or 120 feet, but you could put any custom amount that you want in there, and that would be the distance that your player can see. There's another option here for tint color. The tint color, what that allows you to do is so you can get a good idea, and your players can get a idea of exactly what each individual player can see. So you can change the tint to like a blue or a green for a certain certain character, and you don't have to ask, well, who's seeing what, who's seeing that. You could just leave it, you know, they'll be able to see exactly who can see what area. Um, I tend to just leave it blank, just the white one. I find it just makes it a little more immersive. I don't like having all these kind of random colors taking up space. Finally, we do get a couple of addition, additional effects for the night vision. This is nothing more than some visual indicators. It doesn't really affect the functionality of the system at all, so I just tend to leave it off. Uh, the next option here we have is limit field of vision. So typically it's important to know that the way that, uh, that uh, dynamic lighting works by default is characters can see in a radius. So they can see in the circle around them. So you are able to actually limit the exact, exact field of vision if you so choose by enabling this feature here. So here you can choose the exact degree from which it starts. So imagine it's a circle, it's, everything is 360 degrees, and you can choose the exact, um, sorry, so the center here, you can choose where exactly it starts. So if you start at 90 degrees, it'll be to the right, and then you can choose the total amount so they can see 90 degrees from the right, it'll kind of open up in like a V or like an L shape from their right side. So you can choose exact, the exact angle and exactly how much they can see from. For some campaigns, this may be very useful if you want to make sure the character can only see exactly what's ahead of them, or maybe there's something kind of obscuring their, their general field of view. You can enable that feature to do that. Moving on to the next options, we get options for bright light and low light. So typically you would use these for situations where your characters might be carrying a torch or something of that nature. Um, what this effectively allows you to do is, is just kind of control the, the exact amount of light that they're giving off, and it's important to note that all of your players will see this light as well, as they're holding something that is em emitting bright light. Um, you can choose the exact radius for how much you want to see. This is their bright light radius, and this is their dim light ra radius. Uh, so it'll be slightly faded off into the distance and into the edges. You can choose the exact brightness of that as well here. Um, the next option that it allows for here is directional lights. So this works exactly like that limit field of view, except this is uh, specifically for the light source that they're carrying. If they're carrying a bright light source, like a lantern, but maybe it's kind of shielded around the sides, you want them to hold that light to only be focusing forward. So you can do exactly that same thing here. It works exactly the same way as the limit field of view option. So we're going to turn that off. And then this is just a total of the, the amount of light that the character has. It's just a, an addition of bright light, low light, if they have night vision enabled, just gives them the total vision that the character has. Final option here under advanced settings is something called the light multiplier. It's not really that complicated at all, but it is something that can come quite in handy in a lot of circumstances. So let's say there's a scenario in one of your games where your character's vision is impaired in some way. Maybe they've, their vision is cut down in half because of some kind of an environmental effect. Instead of going through here and manipulating and adjusting each individual setting, you can just choose, uh, you can just choose to adjust the light mu multiplier instead. Say the light now is at 50% and now it just kind of cuts their vision down immediately in 50%. You can restore that back to 100 without having to adjust and remember what any of these individual settings are. So it's a very simple way of, of adjusting things in real time and very quickly and effectively. So the next thing we're going to be doing is looking at more of a functional level of exactly how dynamic lighting works on a map and how you can adjust it and change it during your games. So remembering you do need to be a Roll20 subscriber to be able to use this. You have to be paying for an account, otherwise you will not have access to these features. So if we look at the layer options here, if we go over to the dynamic lighting layer, you will begin to see all these lines that appear all over the map. So what these are are essentially just vision blockers. These are things that stop your characters from being able to see past them. So as an example, we can see this uh, this token right here is able to see all this circle around him, but he's not able to see certain parts that are being blocked by his vision. So if you look right over here, he can't see what's behind this rock because we have these blue lines that are blocking it. Similarly, he can't see what's beyond this pink circle where these rocks are, these boulders blocking that pink, is blocking his, his, his line of sight from that, so he can't see anything that's going on behind it. So the question then becomes, how exactly do we create these? How can we use these in real time, and how can we 
you know, use them to our benefit to create a more immersive experience for the game. So it's really simple. Uh, you just want to go over to your drawing tools and we're going to select polygon or line. So let's say we wanted to block off vision of this, uh, this hallway over here at the top. So it's super simple. We just click on a spot a little bit here and we click on a spot over here. It creates a line. And then if we right click, it stops, uh, it stops kind of drawing there. And that's it. If we go back to our token layer, go to select, we won't be able to see past that. And we can still see all the areas moving over here and that's it, it completely blocks the vision past that. So let's say this was a boulder or something that was blocking the area. You know, and now our players have gone through, they're, they're able to do it. You have a couple of different ways of removing that during your game. You can either just delete it or you can just select it and move it out of the way. And now all of a sudden, in real time and immediately, that vision, that area has been completely revealed for them. And now they can simply walk past it and they can see everything else that's going on over here. So essentially that's it. That's a quick look at updated dynamic lighting and how it works in a game. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know if you have any more questions or uh, would like me to follow up on anything else in the future. Thanks so much and take care.